It's also another way which allows to tuck some terms, important terms and entities in the manuscript before the manuscript is published. So after publication, it will be much easier to extract those entities from the text of the publication. So this is a joint, joint uh, presentation of Lawrence Benichou from um, the Paris Museum and Pensov team. So we will talk about two different workflows. Well, which do the same thing and they do pre-publication, data linking and data tagging. These tools are ARFA writing tool and MetaTax, the MetaStamp publishing system of the Paris Museum. But, okay, so what is semantic publishing? Publishing, semantic publishing means to assign tax to some text strings, some entities in the text. So, and tax can be gener general, generic terms or can be domain specific like for example, Darwin Core, which is the best example of a well-down domain specific vocabulary. So all tax entities should be identified with persistent identifiers, which will actually identify the use of that term at that specific place of that specific publication, like an, an instance of usage of something. And also, Semantic tagging allows to convert the entire article into uh, not only human readable, but also machine actionable text. And we have a special, plus you have developed a special, special standard for that called TaxPub, which is an extension of the JATS XML standard, a very well known standard for journals and journal articles. Okay, here is just an example of semantic tagging of a taxon name. So you see the name in the human readable text, Nixonia Masneri. And in the blue field, you see how this name is translated into XML, which says that Nixonia is not a name of something, it is a name of a genus. And Masneri is, uh, it's, specific epithet, species epithet of that, of that species, that it has been described by Van Noort and Johnson, and so and so. So this one, one line of text is translated into several lines of something like computer code, actually computer code, yeah. This is how we do it. It started in 2010 with issue number 50 of Zookies. And um, from that time, we tag all articles published by Pensoft in this way. We tag many things inside the article text so that computer can understand several terms, what they mean, what they are used for, how they can be extracted, and where they could be distributed and disseminated. Why, why semantic publishing? Why, why to do this really, really hard effort during the publishing process? There are many, many benefits of that, but it's enough to mention that first it creates a good look and a good ex reader's experience when, when the user reads the HTML version of the article. It's a lot of things inside which, which brings additional enhancements to the text. Also, uh, when you have the article in machine readable text, you can do a lot of things with it or computers can do a lot of things actually. It facilitates text and data, data mining and conversion to linked open data, to RDF for example, and many other things. Just a couple of examples of that. For example, if you have tagged the geo coordinates, then a tool could create a map on the right, right bar of the article. And this map is not present in the article itself. It is created by a special tool. You can play it with it. You can play with it. So it's, it is semantic enhancements to the original article. This is just example of what tagging can be used for. Or if you have the article in XML, you can submit the entire article to PubMed Central if your journal is approved to be indexed by PubMed Central. 
And the readers of PubMed Central can search through it along with many, many millions of other articles in the biology and biomedicine domain. This is possible only if you have the article in full text XML. Or special tools can extract different elements of the article. For example, taxon name, taxon treatment, or images and export them to different data aggregators. So this is a workflow which exists for already 12 or 13 years. If you look at a material citation, which is actually a current record, a published current record of a specimen, you can see that there is a lot of links inside that only a current record. One can identify first the journal, then the article through the article DOIs, the authors of the article through their ORCID, ORCID IDs, taxonomic name through the catalog of life IDs. So all those elements which constitute the species occurrence record can be identified and linked to each other. And actually this system already exists. It is developed both by Platze and also by Biodiversity Data Journal of Pencil. So there are two ways, two workflows for pre-publication tagging. The first one is MetoTaxa or MetoSTEM workflow, elaborated, currently elaborated by the Paris Museum. They got a grant for that and exemplified by the European Journal of Taxonomy and Platze. The second one is update of Pensoft publishing workflow with the second version of the R4 writing tool, which some of you I think know through their publication in publications in the Biodiversity Data Journal, with much more semantics as it was available before. Metataxal workflow, what is it? When the manuscript in Word file is accepted for publication, the desk editor or technical editor um, put some styling on the text, which identifies the type of information this text represents. Then all the text is converted into XML and editing of the, and adding of semantic text is possible in that XML. At that stage, a computer uh, web, ser a web service actually um, contacts the Platzi Golden Gate editor and the Golden Gate annotate text entities in the text with their semantic tags. After this procedure, the taxon treatment or a description of a species, species look like this. All these separate sections of the treatment, the name, the figures, are already tucked, so they can be exported separately from the article, from the entire treatment. It, uh, also, the, the same holds for the material examined part for the occurrence records, which, which I just mentioned. They are parsed by Darwin Core entities by the same tool. Then in the tool, the technical editor also can I should, of course, add some metadata about that article, when it will be published, the DOI of the article, and checks also the metadata provided by the authors for their consistency. The bibliography is also being parsed by the different elements of the references in the reference lists. And at the very end, the, the, the basic XML, which is a simple XML, so to say, is being converted into TaxPop XML, which is semantically much richer than the basic XML. So all this procedure, all this process happens before publications. In a very similar way, Pensop does this, but we start from the InDesign file, not from the Word file. So it's a different process, but does more or less the same, the same things. The Paris Museum also, also developed additional module 
of their system called Metostem, which is designed to, to extract and republish monographs, especially floras or faunas. It has some specific tax, some specific, specific feature, for example, like a special field for verbatim names of the, of the plants or animals. So it's, it's more focused on, on monographs in contrast to, to metataxa, uh, which is uh, focused on journal articles. So now I will tell you a bit more on the Alpha writing tool. This is the second version of the tool developed uh, um, during the bicycle project. This is a collaborative authoring, reviewing and publishing tool where the authors can write first, can write their articles, um, just like they do in Google Docs. But it provides some more features than Google Docs because it is domain specific tool. It is designed to serve biodiversity and also general biology users and authors. This is the dashboard of the tool when one can have several manuscripts in preparation. Uh, invite collaborators, authors, and so on. Additional semantics which we added, in addition to those which already existed for 10 years at Pensoft, is, for example, adding context to in-text citations. There is a special ontology called CITO, which defines your evaluation of the, of the article you cite you, can not just cite something, but you can say, I support the results of that article I cite, or I question it, or I disagree with. This is, this is a very simple feature, just by selecting some, some values from the ontology. And they stay in the XML, so they can be harvested by machines, uh, which will also track not just the act of citations, but the context of citation. Another feature is if you type a species, then the tool will contact Catalog of Life and suggest the canonical names of that genus, for example, depending on the text string you type. And you can select a taxon name which will go into your manuscript together with its catalog of life ID. So in this way, the taxon name really becomes unambiguous. It has a canonical text string. It has ID and the ID stays in the XML. So um, <coughs> if we import material citations, occurrence records, you can see here easily that each term has its value, which make the occurrence record already parsed at the moment of, it, of its import in the tool. So those occurrence records are exported to GBF just on the day of publication. They go, they straight. They are high quality, high quality occurrence records. There is no ambiguation in their interpretation because they are taken from the databases in that structured way you see it now. So persistent identifiers, many, many things in this rich XML, which we produce has IDs. Imagine that its taxon name has its catalog of life ID, but also each mention of that taxon name, which we call taxon name usage has a separate UID in the XML. We have both the taxon name ID and the taxon name usage ID. And we clearly separate these two. In the bicycle, we, together with Platzi and with uh, um, uh, edit, uh, European Journal of Taxonomy, all three teams just sat together and produced a large paper, maybe 70 pages or so, published in a real journal, which uh, uh, sets the, the scene and the rules for using identifiers in article text. So if you are interested in that, you can find a lot of recommendations, what kind of identifiers, how to mint their, those identifiers, how to assign them in the XML, which, which 
let's say, syntax you should use to, to, to put do, those identifiers. And I think this is from me, right on time, but we have two minutes for some questions. Maybe there are some questions on the on the chat. Yes, Peter. How do you handle corrections after the publication? If somebody's reading the article and sees something is incorrectly marked up, is there a way to update information, or is it immutable? If if uh, the correction changes the let's say the information itself, it should be corrected through Corrigendum. So if we have to correct the markup, we can do that. If we have to correct the content, yeah. we cannot do that. We should not. We can, but we should not, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> so we do this through Corrigendum, which is linked to the original article through Crossmark. Other questions? Yeah. Sorry. Um, how do you handle identifying names that aren't in, check in Catalog of Life? Yeah, uh, I would like to answer your question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no idea. That, that, that's so. That, that that's the main problem. Uh, the the publishers we, uh, as you know, we publish all different kinds of subjects. We do not publish only articles about that flora or that particular group of animals. So we have to be able to <clears throat> access those lists of taxonomic names and other entities and to be able actually to add those identifiers into the publications and to stop create further mess. And that's why it's really important to, to, to make this list as uh, comprehensive as they could be and to basically to start use them. So <coughs> that's the... Actually, we, we, now, we, now we are working uh, on the mechanism that uh, for those names who have uh, who has uh, catalog of life IDs, we will use them. If not, uh, then we step on the GBF backbone, and we can use uh, taxonomic names which are not in the catalog of life, and try to get uh, basically other identifiers they may have, like Zoobank ID, IPNI ID, uh, Index for Gorum ID, because the path of those databases is not so straight straightforward to the catalog of life and there is uh, some kind of uh, latency uh, so yeah yeah at the very end if we don't have uh, if we have a taxonomy name which is nowhere you can imagine so just not indexed then we will always put UAD of its usage so it's identifiable but in this case not linked to external authority okay we have to move with okay. the next presentation Oh, sorry. Okay. Maybe yeah. So your talk yeah. is on pre-publication. What about post-publication? For example, the abstracts for Tedwick, I wanted to link to my presentation and the recording. Currently had to do that in a comment. Is there a way to provide that more semantically after publication? You will hear about this in the next publication. Excellent. Next uh, presentation, sorry. So it is, who should be on stage now? <laughs> <laughs> 